What's up YouTube, Bess here from skillup.gg. Today we're going to be talking about how to mod your shiny new Liberator. You worked hard to get it, now let's make sure that you're getting the most out of it. Stick around for some tips on how to mod this amazing assault rifle. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, you've got a Liberator, the high-end assault rifle from the Open Beta. It is a very schmick, very shiny weapon. Uh, you've worked hard to get it. Now let's make sure we mod it properly. The first thing to say about this weapon is that it is an assault rifle, which means it is naturally very recoil heavy. Very recoil heavy. And in fact, of all the assault rifles that I've used thus far, I actually think that this is the most recoil heavy of any gun that I've experienced. And obviously, all guns fall into similar archetypes, you know, in terms of the Liberator being the same as another type of assault rifle, just with better stats. Um, but the developer also pointed out that they do, they do make adjustments to individual weapons with regards to these values. And I wonder whether or not those values are always reflected, because I swear this thing feels like it kicks more than comparable assault rifles, than, than assault rifles within the same archetype. So something to watch out for there, but regardless of how we, do, or how we consider that problem, this is an assault rifle, we need to maintain uh, or minimize its stability. So when we think about uh, what we might apply to it, our first priority is going to be stability, and initial bullet stability. Now, obviously, we're not going to be thinking about things like hip fire accuracy because that doesn't help us. Uh, you know, we are not aiming to be hip firing this thing. This is not a shotgun. We really and we we really want to be focusing on any stat that is going to bring up its overall stability. So, I would definitely recommend initial bullet stability, which is you know initial bullet stability. I've got a video on that which I'll link below. Essentially, it is the amount that the gun kicks the first time that you fire it. Uh, you know, and that first bullet has a modifier to the amount of recoil that the gun has, and it's more recoil. So initial bullet stability increases the stability on that first shot fired. And then, of course, there's just basic stability, which is the rate at which the or the, the amount of, uh, of movement within the gun in terms of its recoil, the angle at which the gun will move when you're firing. So any... any um, stats that that minimize that are going to be really useful i for one have a stability and initial bullet, bullet stability grip which i use um, the other one to consider might be uh, something around accuracy so just to be really clear accuracy and this is just a theory at this point but i'm fairly sure that accuracy relates to the spread of your gun or your reticle i should say as you fire it so if we aim down sights we pull the trigger you see that my reticle in the middle is getting wider i believe that accuracy relates to the, the speed at which that reticle becomes larger. It's the, it's the spread of your bullets within the scope of your reticle, yeah? Uh, so again, just a theory, not sure if that's correct, uh, but I have read a few things to suggest that. Interested to hear you guys, if you uh, know any more about that, leave your comments below. So there we have it with regards to how we might put a, um, a stability mod on that. We're going for initial bullet stability, we're going for stability because this is an assault rifle, we want to try and keep it as stable as possible. Uh, next up, we want to think about our muzzle. Now, you're not going to get a huge number of muzzles throughout the game. I've been playing very solid and I've only got a couple, uh, but you've got critical hit damage and critical and reduced threat. So, be really clear, critical hit damage at this stage is a really negligible stat because you don't have a lot of base crit chance. So, the overall impact on your DPS sheet is going to be next to none. I'm going to do another video later on on character sheet DPS and how that all work so please be sure to subscribe so you get notified when that video becomes available but um yeah critical hit damage very very low uh utility stat for us at this point it's going to have a very minimal increase on our dps on our character sheet and in fact i'll show you we're at 3895 dps right and with this weapon and if i apply this muzzle with 13 percent crit hit damage it's going to go up to 3915 so you can see very very low and the reason for that obviously is if we look at my critical hit chance it's only 5.5 percent so you know even with 53 percent crit hit damage really doesn't do that much so um put that on there but don't expect much out of it obviously reduce threats i mean that's really going to be only useful for high-end encounters when you're running a proper group with a with a tank aiming to tank as much aggro as possible with a healer trying to keep that tank up with uh, yourself as dps perhaps having that low um aggro mod is going to be really really useful uh, but for now not very useful at all so then we move on to the magazine now this is a really important one so i just want to talk about this because 
there's a lot in this, right? So here we have a purple heavy magazine spring, and you're like, ooh, purple, how exciting, it's obviously the best, let's put it on, right? But look at the stats, it's 15% critical hit damage and 11% rate of fire, okay? We've already talked about critical hit damage being quite useless. Now, rate of fire is not bad, to be honest with you. This is a gun that has a pretty decent rate of fire already, so we're probably not going to get a huge amount of value out of that, given that a few of our shots are already going to be missing. So, firing faster, yes, it's going to help, but it's probably not the best stat for us. Um, where this, where rate of fire might be really useful is in something like a medium rate of fire marksman rifle where you're already going to be aiming for the head and you've got time to line up those shots and if you can hit headshots 10% faster every time you're going to be seeing some pretty big results out of that. So if we apply this, um, actually we'll unapply that for now, we'll just go back to what we saw 3915 on our character sheet in terms of damage. If we then look to apply this mod we then go up to 4123, okay? So we've seen a moderate increase in DPS on the back of that, okay? But let's see how it goes when we apply the mods that we actually should be applying, right? So I've got a mod here, which is 29% magazine size and 7% damage. So 29% magazine size is massive in terms of its utility, right? You've got a gun that shoots X number of bullets before it has to reload. This basically says you can shoot 30% 30 30 more bullets before you have to reload. And in a, in a game where the enemies are as bullet spongy, right, in, in inverted commas, as, as they are here, enemies take a lot of bullets to bring down. Having an extra 30% in your magazine before you have to reload is huge. And obviously, we then have this 7% weapon damage stat, which is massive, right? It's basically just saying this, this weapon will do 7% more damage, which is huge, right? So if we apply this mod to our weapon, we can see things go up to 4,774, right? So before it was at 4.1, now it's at 4.7. So it's a massive increase in DPS simply for using a different mod, right? Now, these stats are going to change massively as um, as the beta opens, as uh, we get to live and when the beta is open. When we have the ability to stack more crit, critical hit damage is going to make a lot more difference. Lots of other stats are going to change in terms of their relative weighting. But now, certainly for the beta, if you have something that increases your uh, base weapon damage as a mod, absolutely go for it. No, no question about that. It's, it's, it's definitely the best one to go for. The other thing that I point out very quickly is that your gloves can also have uh, weapon modifier damage on it, right? So I don't actually have anything that buffs assault rifle damage, but here you see we have shotgun damage, and then we have LMG damage for this one. I'm desperately looking for a pair of gloves that increases my assault rifle damage. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this 29 is. I don't think that's 29 damage per bullet. It could be, but I doubt it. I'm not exactly sure how that breaks down, but regardless, you do want to be looking out for a set of gloves that match the weapon types that you are using. Um, and that's really about it, guys. It's, it's obviously an amazing weapon, but just be really aware of how the stats work and which stats are going to be most useful to you at this point. Um, with the Liberator, we are definitely going for more stability because it has a huge amount of kick on it. We are absolutely going for um, as much base weapon damage and magazine size as we can. Um, and then after that, to be honest with you, it's really just gravy on top of that. There's the, the other mods aren't going to make a huge amount of difference. So guys, if you found this video useful, please like. We are trying to build this channel as much as possible going into the Division launch. I would love to have as much support as possible. And leaving a like really does help a huge amount. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe. We've got another video coming very soon talking about character sheet DPS and exactly how that's calculated and going through all of the different stats in the Division. So please, uh, yeah, hope you stick around. Hope you found this video useful and I will see you guys in the dark zone. Thanks, bye-bye.